first love we were young and wild we were up all night you don't forget that summer sun 2009 we were feeling high and i got drunk for the first time i thought i was cool i thought i looked smooth in your eyes and tried to so welcome everybody to Bonaire, part of the Caribbean Netherlands. Um, we, uh, we left Seattle, flew to Atlanta, and then took a plane from Atlanta to Bonaire. And we've been down here for a couple of days now. It's taken us a little bit of time to, uh, to get settled in, and, and we're looking forward to showing you around the island. One of the things that um, people asked before we left was, where the hell is Bonaire? So that's where Bonaire is, and it's also known as the diver's paradise or the shore diving capital of the world because the scuba is so accessible. You drive around, find these little rocks with names and dive sites on it, and they correspond to a dive site or a reef out around the island. The whole island is a protected reef, so the quality of, of the diving has, uh, has been fantastic. So we definitely are, are going to show you that. is a winding road no telling where it goes driving through days and nights won't stop for traffic lights and i i really want to know really want to know if i let me figure out Keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Okay, so we've had a full day of diving bon air in yes. our belt, and then some half days where we had to go do some things. Done some shore diving and some boat diving. We went out to climb bon air. What was your favorite part so far? Finding the seahorse. <laughs> I didn't actually find the seahorse, but someone else did, and I got to look at it, and it was awesome. There's that one, and the eagle ray was pretty sweet. So you're telling me you're just in it for the animals? Yes. So you saw your first seahorse today. Mm -hmm. You saw your first eagle ray today. Yep. What else did you see today? Lots and lots of beautiful coral. <laughs> the coral is just phenomenal here. Nowhere that I've dived before compares, other than Cozumel maybe, but it's just rampant here and so healthy. So <clears throat> it's happy hour. So cheers to that. But well, we do have a problem. These are our last two beers. Mm -hmm. So... And we have mixers, but no liquor. Yeah. The liquor store was closed when we made groceries the other day. So um, I guess we're going to have to uh, to do some shopping. There is 
is a life I lead in this city. Hurry and to cut my Hello. teeth. How are you? I can take what I need to get by. It doesn't make it easy. The other piece of my heart moves slow. Somewhere in the great unknown. When I return from the afterglow. Will you carry me like I am whole again? Wait, hold on. Be together, take me back where I belong. I want it all. I had a feeling, but the feeling is all gone. Wait, hold on. But be together, take me back where I belong. to our weekend in Bonaire. All our bags are packed, we're ready to go. Insert, Very sad. Insert Armageddon clip here. <laughs> I'm not gonna try and sing like Michael Clark Duncan. Okay, good. Because uh, he does he has a much better bass than I do. Yes. Um, so we wanted to talk uh, a few things that we really liked about our trip. A few tips, things that we've learned along the way, things that we wish we knew when we got here. Mm -hmm. 
so I think to start out with the first item that we wanted to talk about is is uh, where to stay. So this time when we came down, we stayed at Buddy, Buddy Dive Resort. Buddy Dive Resort. I think uh, it's it's really a great place suited for a lot of uh, dive groups. So what we found is there was a lot of dive shops that organize trips and come down and they have a really great setup. They've got a, two docks with quite a few boats that leave. Easy sign up, easy to get on. Um, Large vans for them to take to and from the shore dives and to and from town. Yeah, there's a drive through uh, tank fill station. There's tanks that are right on the dock. There's a reef right outside so you can uh, quickly get in the water. Um, it makes it uh, makes it pretty pretty seamless from that aspect. They also have a fleet of rental cars, not just vans. So we actually got a pickup truck to take around the island to do some of the shore dives. Mm -hmm. And but, other exploring. Yeah, to do other exploring. So I think that one of the challenges though is because a lot of big groups come to, it's this, just not, particular to this particular resort. I think it's not the speed that uh, that we are normally used to. The rooms are very nice. They have a little kitchenette, mm -hmm. good air conditioning, lots of space to spread out, a big patio to, to eat breakfast on in the morning if you want. Breakfast was included with our room. Yep. Uh, so I think I think there's some, some definite positives that, that we really liked about the resort. But I think if we were to, to do it again, if we were to come back here again, uh, hopefully under power of sail. Um, <laughs> well, then we won't need a place and, to and, stay. And our sailboat dreams. But if we came back here again via airplane, uh, I think that we would get an Airbnb. We saw some really nice Airbnb locations on the... The southern the end of the southern island. Southern end of the island that we really liked, but I think they're all over. I think that they're both north and south. Right. The ones that we, we saw on the southern end of the island, right on the beach, had access to the reef. Uh, I think that's what we would do and cook for ourselves. We tried to cook for ourselves in the room a couple of nights here, and it worked out okay. We had lunch here every mm -hmm. day, and that worked out really well. Lunch was much easier because we were able to make sandwiches and eat fruit and yogurt. The problem with the dinner cooking is that we weren't really provided with all the spices and such so our usual more flavorful dishes were a little bit more difficult to make but other than that it was yeah I think, we, I think we've been spoiled um on some of our other adventures that, that the places that we've stayed have been uh, somewhat stocked with some of the more more basic necessities than, than we're used to so uh, i think all in all though i think i i like buddy dive i don't have any complaints about our, our stay here there's some some, some great things that, uh, that happened here. I think. So all in all, I think that's really good. Mm -hmm. The diving, uh, I think the second thing to talk about is the diving. Um, it's incredible. The reef is in such great shape. There's both there's both soft coral and hard coral that are they're just absolutely unbelievable, as you've seen in some the of the videos. The variety is unbelievable. And every dive site we went to, we saw something new. Yeah. Each I, day. Yeah, I think each day was, was something different. Um, what would you say your favorite dive was? Something special. So something special was over by the marina, and mm -hmm. we had to uh, do a little bit of a surface when we get out of it. Some people actually get there by boat, so some of the resorts have a boat dive, but you can access it if you put a little work in, uh, swim towards it. But it was a really, it was a really great dive site right by the marina. That's another thing to be aware of. While shore diving is incredibly common and easy here, be prepared for some difficult entries <laughs> and some surface swimming. Yeah. So. Make yeah. sure you have good fins and you're prepared to do a little bit of surface sewing to the different buoys and different areas because it's not as simple as just jumping off the boat. Yeah, I think um, I think somewhere along the way I had the idea that shore diving um, in this particular instance means you walk off a sandy beach and mm -hmm. then kind of paddle out. You just the, float out and it's magical. No, no, the coast here is pretty rocky um, in most places, and there's and there's actually only a few things. Um, that we were able to do that were really actually a true beach entry. So uh, I right. think that that um, got to be, be cognizant of that, be aware of that, that there will be some difficult entries. Make sure that your dive booties have pretty thick soles. Mm -hmm. um, you had to buy new booties. <laughs> yeah, my, my feet uh, are a little tender, little tender feet uh, mm -hmm. from wearing shoes all the time <laughs> in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I think that the other thing that we actually used that helped a lot is the, the book that you got. So we'll link that below, um, down here somewhere. For diving in Bonaire, they had a, a book that had a reef guide. Yeah. It talked about where to do entry. It talked about how each of the guys. How to get there. How to get there. 
which yeah. is very important because that's another thing they really promote here is to not bring anything valuable in the rental truck because when you are diving, it's a high target for break-ins. So the yeah. book helped us get around without our iPhones. Yeah, so don't don't bring your phone with you and leave it in your car. Don't leave anything in your car mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're around, when you're di especially when you're diving. But uh, the book helped a lot. I highly recommend checking that out. It was really helpful for us. Uh, it also helped us uh, describe some of the different marine life that we hadn't actually seen before mm -hmm. and we wanted to check out. Highly recommend that book. Yeah, so so not only the diving, right? The island's got a whole host of other things that we were able to go do. There's, towards the uh, southern end of the island, there's the salt pans. Mm -hmm. So the salt pans are where they actually mine salt, so they flood them with these fields, effectively fields with seawater. So they're not fields, I guess, anymore, but they have these areas that they f of land that they flood with seawater, capture that, let the water evaporate, and as it does, it increases in salinity. And so the, some of the pictures and video you saw, um, or some of the pictures and video that we have on here, show these these uh, pools of pink water and these white mounds of, that look like uh, that look like mountains, but they're actually salt. It's piles and piles of salt. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was actually the number one, my understanding is it's, it was the number one Export. Um, export out of Bonaire before tourism took over mm -hmm. uh, to be the number one industry right, on the island. Along with that, of course, comes some history. And I think one of the powerful things that we saw down there is they actually have a series of um, huts that are still set up, which is where they, uh, where the slaves lived that worked those fields. So the white slave huts and the yellow yes. slave huts are on the southern end of the island. And if you come to Bonaire, I highly recommend checking those out. It's a pretty powerful to see how tiny the quarters were where they where they stayed. So it's definitely worth taking a look at. Also on that end of the island tend to be most of the flamingos. Mm -hmm. So Bonaire is also known for the penguin populations. They coincidentally like the flamingo. What did I say? Penguin. Oh, penguin? <laughs> Not penguins. There's no penguins here. I promise you. Um, they um, the flamingo population coincidentally likes the southern end of the island because all the salt pans tend to be where some of the shrimp capture mm -hmm. uh, and they can feed. So they eat the shrimp that are in there, which is what gives them their pink color. So it was really cool to see that side of the island. Mm -hmm. um, and went and saw the donkey sanctuary. So we got some video of, we went to the run in Aruba where you can walk through the donkeys. Here you drive through the donkeys and it's much larger and a great more many donkeys great more many is great more a, many is that an official that's number? official english right there and you're able to feed them through the windows and the donkeys know this so as you can see on the video a lot of them will trot alongside the truck hoping for an extra carrot but that is a non-profit they have donkeys from five weeks old to 49 years old they have special donkeys or special meadow for the older donkeys and special meadow for the special needs donkeys and then the rest are just free to roam so the reason why they have a donkey sanctuary is these islands used to use donkeys as their main mode of transportation until about the 1970s, and then cars took over. Well, when the cars took over, they just kind of let the donkeys roam around, and they were getting hit, they were getting sick and not doing so well, so someone took it upon themselves to round most of them up and put them in sanctuaries and take care of them that way. There are still quote-unquote wild donkeys around the island as well. So you'll see them hanging out on the side of the road. Some of them try to cross the road, but they're not nearly as friendly as the donkeys in the sanctuary that are more used to people. Yeah. So some of the things that I think, um, stopping back and going and discussing diving one more time, mm -hmm. we actually did do a, a boat dive on the East Coast uh, with the East Coast diving. Mm -hmm. And that was fantastic. Uh, highly recommend getting over there uh, if you get the opportunity. Make sure you reach out to them. We'll put a link to, to their information down below. That was a fantastic dive. We were able to see some marine life on the east side of the island that you aren't able to see on the west side of the island. Uh, we were able to go to, to Turtle Town. Oh, Turtle sorry. City. Sorry, it's called Turtle City. I, I think it's better named Turtle, Turtle Town, Town, but that's just me. Um, so we went to, to a place called Turtle City, and, and it really lived up to its name. <laughs> we were able to see... Uh, probably 40 or 50 different turtles mm -hmm. kind of swim around. Every time you look up and look around, you see three or four swimming by you. So I uh, highly recommend checking that out. Yeah. Things that we didn't get to do that we wish we would have gotten to do uh, on the island. 
I think that the there were some interesting cave structures mm -hmm. on the other side of the island. When we were in Aruba, we did check out some of the caves, uh, and they had bats on the inside. Yeah, really little cool. little sugar bats, or I'm not sure what kind of bat they were, but they help pollinate all the cacti across the island. But they only live in that one little cave, and they're about that big. Um, I'm not sure if there is a native bat to Bonaire, but there are the caves and the national park, which is on the north part of the island. And from what we were told, you need a four-wheel drive. And we weren't sure if the rental truck would do that. So <laughs> we decided not to brave that off-roading adventure. But I think it would be a great adventure in the future to do. Yeah, so we would definitely have liked to have explored more of the, the national park, given more time. Uh, so definitely want to check that out in the next one. So. Thanks for coming with us on this adventure. If you like this uh, video, if you like this format, different from our other formats, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button and uh, click the little bell so you can get notifications when we release more videos. We're going to try and release more and more. Probably do a lot of uh, discussions about how we how we plan these trips, how we afford these trips. Uh, a lot of this stuff we do on miles and on points because of my travel for work and from different points cards we have. So a lot of this stuff is actually relatively affordable and we can talk about those. So if you're interested in that, leave us a comment below. If there's something you'd like us to talk about more, leave a comment below. So uh, thanks and we'll see you on the next one.